Hello and welcome to the Purvanchal IS. Welcome to the online platform of Purvanchal IS. I am Kajal and here I am for the discussion and explanation of GS paper 4 for Madhya Pradesh Public Service Commission. But remember one thing that this video or the series of this video is not only going to benefit in Madhya Pradesh Public Service Commission but it is also going to give you benefit parallelly in all state level examination. So do not worry about that. So Purvanchal IS is, uh, stands for sustainable education and welcomes all those students who are coming from the weaker section of the society. Of course then we are going to give them a better a qualitative study and a study material both. This is set up by Dr. Ravi P. Agrari as you can see on the screen who is again a renowned teacher in this field or area. So you can join it at Gorakhpur for face to face and live classes after the normal situation. So after the valuable information about the Purvanchal IS, let's move for the next slide. So here once again I will recall you that my name is Kajal and here I am for the GS paper 4 explanation and GS paper 4 which is a part of your mains examination and it is your ethics paper. Right? So let's move for the main content. So guys this is lecture number 5 and today we are going to understand the philosophy, the teaching and the life of Kabir and Nanak Dev. They are coming, they are emerge from the Bhakti movement. So here I have, I have written a paragraph that the social, political, cultural and religious movement that emerged in various parts of India during the medieval time tried to bind the people together with the harmonious chord. In this regard, a bhakti movement plays a prominent role because the bhakti movement is remarkable of its kind for the religious unity and for the emancipation of poverty. They have advocated equality between the men and the women. They have uh, uh, condemned idol worship. They condemned the social evils like uh, casteism and sati. They have preached the oneness of God. The focus of the bhakti movement was particularly and they preached of oneness of God. So the bhakti has proved attractive over a period of 2000 years as the devotional path brought together feelings and from easily recognizable, generally acceptable and nearly pleasurable. Dr. S. Radhakrishnan also says that the bhakti is the means to achieve deliverance. In our country from the time of the Rig Veda down to our own ways, that a long line of torch barrier who stress the primacy of a spiritual value, who point out that even as a human being is above the animal and the spiritual man is above the human, the exponent of pure abstract assumption find their way into the mind of men through song and poetry. The attainment of life as God is achieved more easily by bhakti than by other means. The poet, the singers and saint with their ardent devotion to the idols of beauty, synchronization, freedom and ambition have had the strongest impact on the society. So the doctrine that all men both high and low are equal before God has become the central idea that has relied large section of the masses to fight against the priesthood and caste autocracy. This was the real and focused view of bhaktism or bhakti movement. So let's begin with the Kabir very firstly. Let's understand his early life in short term very shortly. So the, so the Kabir who probably lived in the 15th, 16th century was one of the most influential saint. 
He was brought up in the family of Muslim Julahas or we were settled in or near the city of Benares, Varanasi. We have a little reliable information about the life. We get to know of his idea from a vast collection of verses called Sakhis and Pat. It is Sakhi and Pat. Said to have been composed by him and sung by wand wandering bhajan singers. Some of these were later collected and preserved in the Guru Granth Sahib, Panchwani and Bijak. So these are the fact you should know and they will going to help in your building your answer perfectly, attractively and in right and good manner. Let's move for the next now. Now according to the next one, Kabir Das was the first and foremost saint of the Nirgun sect of Bhakti Dharma. He was neither a scholar nor his aim was to compose literature. But he possessed an extraordinary power of speech. His language was known as Purvi Bhasha, words from different languages and dialects such as Arabic, Persian, Avadhi, Braj, Bhojpuri, Khadiboli, Punjabi, Rajasthani, etc. The language used by him can be regarded as the language spoken by the people then, especially spoken by the common people. The Dohas composed by him inspired the people of North India to live a peaceful healthy li and healthy life and gave a new lift to the Bhakti movement of Northern India to a greater extent. Some of the Doha I would like to say you that one of the famous Doha of Kabir that is Guru Gobind Dau Khade Kake Lagu Pai Balihari Guru Aap No Gobind Dio Batai. So this is one of the most famous Kabir Doha and has been also adapted by school textbooks too. It has been heard by almost everyone through one way or other. It means teacher and the Lord both are standing. Of whom should I touch the feet first? Teacher Guru is one of the greater than God, Doha, directly wanted to say that. If you need to choose among Guru and your God, that definitely you should go with the teacher. You should touch the feet of teacher because teacher one who build the nation, build the future of the nation. So this, this beautiful Doha have a beautiful meaning. According uh, and like that, some another Doha is like Bura jo dekhan mein chala, bura na milia koi, jo dil khoja aap na, mujhsa bura na koi. So when I started to look for evil, I could not find any. When I started to look inside my heart, I found out that I am the evil, uh, ev evilist. I am the most bad person then. When I peep in my in, inside, in my soul, in my heart, the Doha tells the reality that whatever we find something wrong being done, we start to point out fingers and blame people for that. If you really start to find someone like uh, who is bad, who will not find any, but start to look inside yourself firstly. Your inner self is bad and no other than one. If you are good, then the rest of the people is good. If you are bad, then the rest of the people are God. Then you should look inside yourself firstly before looking others. If you feel inspired and would like to keep the conduct as a gentle reminder, you can put it up as a poster on your desk also. So this is great. One line of this meaning, of the meaning of this Doha is, if you are good, then all the entire, the entire world is good. If your views are bad, if your conciseness is bad, then normally you will feel that whole world is bad. So again, by, by his Dohas, Kabir wanted to preach the people, wanted to preach the common people. They wanted to give them peace, full life, a healthy life. So it's very important. And you should also know some Dohas for making your answer, for shaping your answer. And it will uh, lift your answer. So you should know at least a two, four Dohas of Kabir, which is... Uh, uh, very uh, motivational I would say now let's move for the next 
and what is the philosophical ideas of kabir so here are main important area of study in your ethics subject you should only focus the ethical essence of the figures essence of the thinkers you should not uh, uh, need to study all his early life all his uh, personal life just you have to focus on his uh, ethical essence on his philosophical idea moral idea that's it so let's read it one by one so kabir treasured wish was to abolish the caste system and aggression of religion based on blind superstition his desire was to establish peace in social and religious spheres among the people and unite them for they were separated one from the other on the ground of religion i told you that they never differentiate among the people kabir preached human equality and openly damned rituals and caste prejudices it seeks to refashion the collective life of the new lines upholding the values of justice and equality for all people in the society that means kabir is a constructive reformer of course he has founded a panth or a sect panth or sect the followers of kabir the followers of kabir or the followers of the kabir sect i would say are to be found principally among lower caste freedom from egoism and self seeking is of the prime importance if there is a little in a way of a social philosophy there would be a negative of the unacquired distinctions that india has kept man from man kabir has refused to concede any caste distinctions he claimed social equality for the low caste that is shudras with the other caste in the indian literature the unreality of these caste distinctions has not clearly been mentioned in the writings of kabir he says it is but a folly to ask what the caste of a saint may be the barber has sought god the washerman and the carpenter even ravidas was a seeker after god the uh, the people who are coming from the any religion like hindu and muslim alike have achieved that end where remained no mark of distinction they talks about the equality among the religion they talks about the equality among the caste they talks about the equality among the men and the women so kabir denounced to what is ridiculous and inhum and inhuman in the division of the society into caste he again says that if you reflect on the origin of caste they came into being from one and the same how it is that on one is born shudra and remain shudra till his death one makes a Brahm, brahman uh, is a thread one and uh, then put it on the world is thus in confusion now in thou art a brahman born of a brahman why art thou not born in a different fashion if you milk a black cow and white cow then the mix their milk will you be able to distinguish the milk of one from to another of course not so why we differentiate between uh, among men and men why we differentiate on the ground of caste and religion or creed so the philosophical essence of the kabir was clear he talks about equality he talks about freedom kabir like uh, i would say that uh, demands the moral purity purity and does not restrict it to, to one particular kind of life like obedience to the master to his uh, commands must not be blind the believer has to rely on his reason and follow according to the details of his conciseness love the people all are same god are one and they made everyone equal so we are not to differentiate between them among them 
so it is the clear cut teaching and the philosophy of kabir who has also known as a social reformer right and that's why it's proved that it has been argued that the bhakti movement of medieval india represented sentiments of the common people sentiments of the people who are coming from the lower caste against the feudal oppression against the brahmanical attitude and according to this view point element of the revolutionary opposition to feudalism can be found in the poetry of the bhakti saints ragging from the kabir and nanak also and to chaitanya and tulsidas it is in the sense that sometimes a medieval bhakti movement are like a indian's counterpart of the protestant reformation in europe so this was the time of great reformation time of great uh, uh, building of society and kabir gives us remarkable contribution now next nanak dev so here we will understand his early life first so nanak dev was born on 15th of april 1469 in a village called talwandi near the ravi river in old punjab talwandi village is 30 miles west of the lahore the name of the talwandi later became nankana in the name of nanak nowadays this place falls under pakistan his father's name was kalyan chand or mehta kaluram and mother's name was trupt devi his first light is celebrated on kartik purnima that is pratham prakash guru nanak became the first guru of the sikh community on 20 august 1507 so here guru nanak like kabir guru nanak also gives the emancipation towards the pain sorrow poverty and casteism and the differentiation amongst the religion so they also known as a social reformer let's move for the next so here guys they were called popularly incidentally he also became the founding of saint of another religion tradition like a sikhism he preached the sikh religion as far as the bhakti movement of north india is concerned Guru Nanak was very conscious of the dignity of human beings for him the best way to serve god is to serve a human being guru nanak considers god as the one god as the one creator for all human being therefore all people are equal irrespective of the diversity of caste belief faith color sex and the race he stressed on universal brotherhood and regarded the entire humanity as one family So though the teaching of Guru Nanak led a new religion known as Sikhism. And in the true uh, true sense he was a social reformer. He journeyed almost all the important places of different religions and saw the social status of the people. Then what he saw? He saw poverty, superstition, caste system and the miserable condition of the women. therefore social liberation of the people was a must from the beginning of his social life and he did it so so here i have written that guru nanak consider god as the creator of all human being therefore all people are equal irrespective of diversity of caste belief faith color sex and race and stressed on universal brotherhood and regarded at the entire humanity as one family so here what is his attitude towards the caste system especially so whenever we think of caste system in india we refer uh, mainly to the hierarchy structured hindu society correct which is based on four varnas you know that in the hindu society caste and religion are inseparable since time immemorial im memorial yes this structure is based on two sources namely the social and mythical you know that mythical socially it is based on the occupation and mythically it is based on the past karma but the people of the last varna that is the shudra last varna brahman kshatriya vaishya and shudra there are four caste under the varna system and the last one is the shudra you know that 
so the shudra faces a lot of the problems similarly chandal in the northern india were treated like inhuman the pathetic condition of the people of these two groups attracted the attention of guru nanak it clearly indicates his support to such least people and he says he says there is no hindu there is no muslim one of the meaning of this saying is that all human beings are equal and created by the same god such a religious and humanitarian thought encouraged the other sikh gurus to fight against the evils of caste system and other social problems also right so according to him serving the needy is the meaningful, meaningful service without such work all sacrifices and all the charity are profitless useless so let's move for the next slide what says so here we will study the philosophical idea of uh, guru nanak so let's read it one by one the religious problems and the social problems like idol worship child marriage untouchability caste system and sati are the evils of indian society and uh, guru nanak uh, saw this with great sorrow and problem and he tried to emancipate from poverty from caste system from untouch untouchability to the people the teaching of guru nanak addressed such problem yes social reformation is upper most concern from him and thus it became the part of his religion also he says the best way to serve god is serve human being his famous saying there is no hindu there is no musliman indicates that all are son of daughter of the same god who is ik ik naam jante hain aap log yani he believes in one god just i have explained to you just listen to me very carefully i have explaining in very mild language so just to focus on the screen and focus on my words so you will understand it properly because you have to just focus on the philosophical ideas or essence of the figures essence of the thinker you have not uh, like uh, study about his personal life his uh, early life his historical values this is not the concern of ethics paper this is the concern of historical or hindi sahitya so you just not um, need to uh, know all these things guru nanak stresses on monoism like one god this is one god god is one who is the source of all thing right so here i would also uh, like to say that on and all all and all uh, the sikhism the sikh gurus in sikhism the sikh gurus uh, rejected varnashram dharma and gave equal status to the all people but unfortunately there is a division in sikh society too but the question of purity and pollution does not arise in sikhism unlike hinduism uh, the division of sikh society is based on various occupation and professions and these are more social and economic in character than religious they are occupational in the character not religious this was the main fact such division is still prevalent due to the jajmani mode of production jajman means patron and uh, uh, people who like mean uh, hereditary servants thus the term jajmani denotes the system of patron client relationship in which the land owning dominant caste exchanging share of crop for good and services provided by the uh, villagers like okay so here uh, like uh, they believe that all people are the children of the same god they are not uh, like about to be differentiate among uh, regards of any kind of differentiation it is difficult to wipe away the factor one has received by the birth from one's parent, parents right so here i am like i would like to say that the experience of guru nanak that he was born when all india was in the bondage of caste system untouchability superstitions and other social problems 
by his long journey he saw the reality of social life with his own eyes he saw the Shudras and the other lower caste people in northern India were denied of their human status. They were kept far away from the society, even their touch, shadow and even voice from the distance was considered contaminating and could defile the pity and religion of the higher caste. This is totally in a human act. On the other hand, Guru Nanak opposed the prevalent sati in society and tried to give equal status to the women also. Thus he travelled almost all part of the India and awakened the demoralizing people to live a better life. But he himself lived a life of harmony and brotherhood. In fact, he was a true social reformer who understood the problem of the people and tried to solve them. He had a great love for human being and according to him, all human beings are the son and daughters of the same God. Right? So it was the thought and the philosophical idea of Nanak Dev. Let's move for the next. Now what is Sikhism? Which is a start by Guru Nanak Dev. Sikhism is the youngest of the world religion, barely 500 years only old. It was founded by the Shri Guru Nanak Dev in, in 1469, 1469, who led the basic principles of Sikhism. The Sikh religion was founded at the time when people were croning under the religious tyranny of Islamic and Brahmanical order and the aristocratic of the Mughal rules. At the critical movement Guru Nanak founded of Sikh religion raised his voice against the tyrannical uh, uh, sorry tyrannical order thanks to the genius of Nanak he contrary to the popular belief did not merely stop short at reform in religious or social conduct of the individual but planted the germs of the new people in whom the whole man could find self-expression and fulfillment Thought the teaching of Guru Nanak led a new religion in the true sense he was a social reformer as uh, I have already told you that uh, he had a great love for human being. He, it, uh, he says that it is not a man that brings forth children into the world. They are denting either the creator, the a sustainer of the world we are here to carry out his divine plan so this was kabir and uh, guru nanak uh, they were like they they are all like a social reformer so uh, here i have complete the philosophical idea of uh, kabir and uh, guru nanak so i would again like to say that you just focus on the philosophical idea what you, do, you don't have to go with the early life of the people early life of the early life of the thinkers and uh, his uh, historical uh, events this is all like waste you just have to focus on the philosophical idea of the people so i am doing here so the main features like uh, understanding the background of the bhakti movement identify the main political and the social economic factors uh, for the rise of the bhakti movement in northern india especially because uh, kabir and guru nanak uh, uh, contribute their works and uh, philosophical idea for northern india especially but it has benefited millions of the people and uh, you you have also like uh, know the main characteristics and the features of the uh, political idea of uh, Guru Nanak and uh, Kabir. So all in all I have uh, covered it with, uh, with uh, uh, good content. So I hope you like it. I hope I make you understand. You will also got the study material in the form of book of ethics of this paper. So thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you guys. Keep happy and for the next video, till then, thank you, goodbye.